I was really hoping I would be standing here right now telling you guys that I had the permits in my little hand and we're ready to start full throttle on the renovation upstairs, but I don't. Permits are delayed. They're were supposed to be done months ago. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Nothing catastrophic, but frustrating to say the least. However, we gotta stay positive. I've been making most of the time, chipping away at whatever things I can get done here and there. First up on that list is picking up where we left off in the last video, painting the wall that we installed in the workshop so I can install some wall control organization, start getting the shop organized. Let's get to it. She's Southern Gold. The way she moves, smooth and slow, everybody knows, you gotta put her in a love song, she's Southern Gold, the way she moves, And for those wondering why I'm not using the paint sprayer here, this time there's actually a good reason. There's just too much stuff to move out of the workshop. Paint sprayers vaporize the paint so there's just like will be fine particles of paint dust that get on everything. But in this situation where it would be really time consuming to sort of move all the stuff out of the workshop or even just to try to cover it all quicker with the size of this wall, just roll it on. I'll show you where the paint sprayer is super useful in a little bit. I, I guess I've never really mentioned this when I'm painting stuff, but I'm always doing at least two or three coats. I just figure once you've seen it once. Don't wanna bore you to death, so yeah. The next thing you'll see tomorrow won't be that photo paint. It'll be, well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, now that the wall is built, I realize we, we kind of have an issue because that was our way into the shop from the front door. So basically we've been coming through the front door, walking upstairs all the way to the back of the building, down the stairs in the back of the garage and all the way up front. And anytime someone comes to the front door, I have to go do that to let them in. So I gotta demo that wall real quick. And down the road, I'm going to frame out a new door there so you can access the workshop separately from the stairwell that leads upstairs. Since I've been working solo, I'm gonna kinda try to cut the frame out so I can take this piece of glass out in one piece. I just realized that's plexiglass, so I don't have to be nearly as careful around that anymore. Maybe it wasn't plexiglass after all. Oops. Time for a quick break to chat about this video sponsor, Ariat Workwear. The story actually starts back this summer. When I started this renovation, I was just rocking my Pumas, doing demolition work, and a bunch of you guys commented that I needed some quality work boots. So when Ariat reached out to me about partnering with the channel on their new workwear line, it totally made sense. But I'm a big believer in using products and putting them to the test before I recommend them to you guys. So I had Ariat send me a few pairs of their boots, which you've been seeing me wear in the past few videos, along with a bunch of other clothing items from their workwear line. After putting these boots through the paces for a few months, I'm absolutely loving them. I've got one pair of steel toe Ariats, which are absolute armor for my feet. I've also got a pair of their composite toe boots, which are a little bit lighter, but still provide a ton of protection. And most importantly, they're super comfy and look Freaking cool, at least in my opinion. Blue steel? On that note, I do have one question for you guys. Do you prefer the military style jeans tucked into the boots look or jeans over the boots? Let me know what you think in the comments. I kind of go back and forth. So if you're in the market for comfortable, durable, stylish workwear, give Ariat a look. They were kind enough to put together a webpage with a curated collection of all my Ariat favorites. Go check that out. There's a link in the description. Thanks again to Ariat for supporting this channel. And now let's get back to the reno work. 
Next up, time to start getting that shop organized because, well, <laughs> it looks like a hoarder's house right now. First step is gonna be installing these wall control panels on that wall. These things are awesome. They're like pegboards on steroids with every kind of accessory or storage feature you could imagine. You'll, you'll see. Since I'll be hanging a lot of tools and somewhat heavy things on these, I'm actually gonna go and reinforce the metal studs in that wall with some two by fours where I'm gonna hang the panels. And right now I am all out of two by fours, so gotta make a quick Home Depot run and I'll be right back. You didn't think a two by four would fit in there, did you? So I haven't bought lumber in a while and I don't know about any of you guys where you're at, but it's insane what COVID has done to two by four prices. They're normally about two bucks, six bucks, tripled. What a rip off! Makes those metal studs seem like a way better option as far as price goes. So uh, apologies for the weird angle, but here's the gist. You got the grooves on the bottom and the grooves on the top, and these just kind of should. Yeah, get an angle, and then they slide into the grooves and go back to back. And then you got wood studs where you need them so you can secure things easier to the wall, but uh, all the convenience you need and the fire code rating with the metal studs. Wood studs are in, so now let's head to the other side and get these panels installed. Gotta see it to believe it. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. But you never thought I could. Look at me now. This is the part I kind of suck at. Well, <laughs> organization in general is just, I'm not the best at. We're gonna start putting all the shelves, hangers, different organization stuff I've got up here so I can just kind of see it figure out how everything's gonna go, and then kind of move it around to what makes the most sense. It's definitely not the most efficient, but yeah, it's just kind of the way my mind works, I guess. So on this wall now, I got most of my woodworking stuff. Probably will be a constantly evolving organization system. I have to kind of see how I use it. And as I use it, I will figure out how I want it laid out. Tomorrow, I got to come back and build some scaffolding. And I will explain more about why that is tomorrow. Little problem. Just talking to the plumber about doing all the plumbing for the upstairs bathroom. He needs to have access to everything in the ceiling under here and along this entire wall over there. He asked me to move the CNC and I, that, that is not an option. It's all level, perfectly dialed in. So what I'm gonna do is just build some makeshift scaffolding. I also got a pretty cool idea about what this scaffolding might be used for in the future, but we'll get to that later. Now let's, uh, let's get to cutting down some lumber. Scaffolding, definitely not rocket science, but there is one sort of like design idea I had. I wanna be able to reuse it and I wanna be able to store it away flat. What I'm gonna do is use lag bolts to attach the leg structures. Then when we're done with it, we can take the legs off. I should stow away in the table. And I do have a use in mind and well, I'll show you later what that use is. So I'm sure deck builders out there will tell me I'm probably not doing this the correct way, sort of crisscrossing lag bolts through the, the posts. If you wanna correct me, it's fine. 
but leave a comment nicely. Let me know a better way to do it. Building the second one, you get to do it all again. Yeah, this is officially a two person job. So when the plumber gets here, I guess he'll get him to help me set it up. All right, scaffolding is in place and I kind of forgot to record it when the plumber and I moved it over to cover the CNC, but this stuff is super sturdy. So climb on up. Ugh. Okay, so the future use of these that I've been teasing, I can't really show you what I wanted to show you, which was me up here with my guitar rocking out a little bit because the plumbers are working right now. The idea is that these will stow away and I can pull them out and use these together to make a sort of stage setup to do some garage concerts. Got some friends and bands. If you check out some of my guitar build videos, you'll see my buddy Trey's band rocking out. So I'd love to invite the public to those garage concerts, but obviously can't do that. The place is only so big, but I might try to work out some way to open it up to some people on Patreon, maybe do like a giveaway or something at any rate. Now, let's get back to the reno and it's time for spraying some paint. And again, I gotta thank you guys. I was just blown away by the amount of support and comments I got when I asked for your help, reaching out to the paint sprayer company who is Wagner Paint Sprayers. I've done a little bit of testing with this thing. So far, super impressed. Electric, you just plug it in, no separate air compressor. You don't have to thin all the paint. Basically just drop this thing into a bucket of paint and. You're good to go. So I'm gonna give it a whirl now, painting the huge length of the garage wall over there, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, wow, that is insanely fast, yeah. I should have got one of these a long time ago. Literally, the thing that takes the longest is moving the ladder. Wall came out awesome. I'm super impressed with the paint sprayer. Wish I'd used it in the workshop wall. I'm gonna be using it all over from here on out. So now let's address that elephant in the room, the permits or the lack thereof. So we were supposed to have those months ago. I just had to extend my Airbnb for yet another month, which is stressful to me having this sort of transient lifestyle. I am ready to move in. So what's going on with the permits? Essentially what it comes down to is the city is fighting with us about our plans to do the roof deck down the road. We looked at some universal building code which Chicago adopted about a year ago, which allows for roof decks with only one exit if certain other conditions are met. We wrote up the plan, submitted everything to meet those conditions because we didn't wanna build a second staircase and second penthouse room to get up to the roof. What we're running into is that the city is applying the old rules and is kind of just being lazy, not wanting to actually look at the new rules and figure out how to interpret them. I'm working with an architect. We're pretty sure that we are right about it. It's just gonna take time to convince the city. These things are what they are and COVID has definitely slowed things down with the city. I'm moving forward, making the most of the time. I'm gonna start designing the two bathrooms in the kitchen, start making cabinets and countertops for those while we're waiting. If you're looking for more content, make sure you've watched all the videos up in that abandoned building renovation playlist if you haven't already. That's it for this time, and I will see you next time.